want to just say, uh, first off, thank you so much for uh, the incredible singing by our dear brother Cantrell right there. Thank you to the Franklins for that incredible welcome. Thank you for Adrian for that incredible prayer. And uh, man, what an incredible winter workshop so far. And God is good. You know, God has done such an amazing thing. How he's used technology in order to draw us closer to each other and closer to him. Even though, I'll be honest, I initially thought, how is this winter workshop going to compare to an in-person workshop? But honestly, I feel like I'm getting more out of every lesson that I hear. You know, I got my table, I got my Bible, I got my notes, I got all organized. I'm not taking notes with like a notebook on my lap and the Bible on my other lap and like squished between a half an inch from each disciple in a, in a big uh, room. I'm actually comfortable and feel like I'm processing the message a lot more, even though it's virtual. And I don't know if any of you feel the same, but I'm just grateful that God takes what looks like a hardship and makes it a blessing in our life. And you know, I'm so uh, uh, grateful to be part of the singles ministry right here. So for those that don't know who I am, my name is Christopher Lasher, and my wife Mariah and I have the privilege of leading the, the central region, as you see behind me, as well yeah. as the ministry of Los Angeles. And mm -hmm. we feel so honored to continue in the footstep of the Zapetas in leading in this capacity. And I just got to say, I'm proud to be part of the singles ministry. You know, I was baptized in uh, 2016 in San Francisco into the campus ministry. And after two years, I moved down to uh, Fullerton where I started leading in the heat sector before July of last year, moving to central LA to start leading the central region with my wife, Mariah. And you know, it's, uh, it's awesome to be part of the singles ministry right now because I really believe that the singles ministry is the piston of the church. It's, it's what puts the church into motion, and it's what keeps the church moving. If the singles ministry starts to slow down, the whole church starts to slow down. Come on, bro. And, you know, the singles ministry, just to give you guys some reference, the singles ministry has baptized more disciples and has sent out more disciples than any other ministry in the church. That's incredible. And then on top of that, the singles ministry has contributed more to special missions than any other ministry in the church. So without you, without your hearts to serve, without your hearts to give sacrificially, evangelization of the world would be severely hindered. And so I'm just proud to be part of the singles ministry. I'm proud to fight alongside my brothers and my sisters. I'm proud to fight to get souls into God's kingdom and to honor our God together as we fight in this new year. I believe God is going to use the singles ministry in an incredible way. And I'm so faithful and excited to see how God uses this new year, the year of mountain moving faith. The title of my lesson is Devoted to Prayer and Ministry of the Word. Let's go to Acts chapter 6. Come on, Starting Chris. Acts chapter 6, starting in verse 1, says, In those days, when the number of disciples was increasing, the Grecian Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, It would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom, we will turn this responsibility over to them and will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. Verse 7. So the word of God spread, the number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly, and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. Well, so what's happening right here? We have the Grecian Jews, which were the Jews that were Greek before they became disciples. And then we have the Hebraic Jews, which obviously were Hebrews. And the Grecian Jews, their widows were, they were being overlooked when the food was getting passed out. And the apostles, they gathered around and, and they said, brothers, this is not right. All these people are complaining to us. We need to get some brothers to handle this situation. It's not right for us to neglect the word of God 
in order to serve on tables. So they asked some brothers to serve. Now, I don't know if you've ever been asked to serve before, but you got to be humble to serve. You got to be willing to serve. You got to know that it's what it feels like to be a servant. You know, as today, as disciples, we're called to imitate Jesus, just like they were called back then. And what was Jesus? Jesus was a servant. So we know today that every disciple needs to have the heart of a servant. See, when we signed up to die on a cross, when we signed up to imitate Jesus, we signed up to serve. But you never know what it's really like to be a servant until you're treated like a servant. And nobody likes being treated like a servant. Amen, church? So what do we see? They decide they're going to choose seven men. Seven men, seven special men, not just anybody, seven men that are full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. And isn't it awesome that we have the Holy Spirit inside of us? Family, are you with me right here? Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Take a sip of that. Okay. There it is. You got this, Chris. Isn't it awesome Stop we have it. the Holy Spirit inside of us? I mean, the same Spirit that was hovering over the waters of the earth when it was unformed in Genesis chapter 1, is inside of you. The same spirit that gave life to humanity is inside of you. The same spirit that guided the prophets in Ezekiel chapter 2. The same spirit that was with Joshua as he led the Israelites into the promised land. The same spirit that came on Othniel as he fought and destroyed the king of Mesopotamia. The same spirit that came on Gideon after he destroyed the altar of Baal. Guys, this is the same spirit that came on Samson when he killed that lion. He tore it like a young goat. When he killed a thousand men with the jawbone of a donkey. And then he tore down the, the Philistine pillars right there. This is the same spirit that descended on Jesus Christ in the form of a dove after he got baptized. Wow, come on. And this is the spirit that's in you this morning. This is the spirit that's in you this afternoon. This is the spirit that's in you if you're a faithful, baptized disciple you have the same spirit of God that we see in the Bible. Is that awesome or what, church? Come on. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. But I got to ask you, what does God want us to do with his spirit? Whoa. So it says here, to devote yourself to prayer and ministry of the word. You know, in verse chapter 1, it says that, in those days when the numbers of disciples was increasing. Well, those days need to be these days. And then in verse 7, it says, when they were rapidly increasing. Now, I got a question. Who here wants their Bible talk to increase rapidly? I know I do. Who here wants their ministry to increase rapidly? Well, the Bible gives us the answer. Devote yourself to the prayer and ministry of the word. You know, currently the singles ministry is at 325 disciples in Los Angeles. But I believe we could reach 400 by the end of 2021. Yeah. But what's that going to take? What's it going to take to reach 400 disciples? Well, we know it's going to take prayer. We know we're going to have to pray. We can't do it on our own on our own without God we can do nothing but with God nothing is impossible on, it's going to take prayer it's going to take devotion to the ministry of the word mm -hmm. and I believe if every region if we could all get behind this as a family if every region baptizes six disciples into the singles ministry then we'll be able to reach that goal of 400 but to be honest that that just doesn't seem like mountain moving faith to me plus we have to take into account the singles that get sent out and we want to be at 400 by the end of the year so i want to put before you that we double that number that we go for 400 but we go for every region making and baptizing 12 disciples in the year of 2021 and that means that even if we send out 40 singles this year we still will have hit our goal of 400 disciples in the singles ministry. Oh 
Come on, Chris. You guys with me here? You guys Come behind on, me on this Come board right here? Come on, bro. Come on. Go, Chris. Bro. Love it. Chris. But I believe there's a couple things that we have to do if we want to achieve this goal. You know, you know, in order to achieve this goal, we must devote ourselves fully to the Lord. Acts 17, verse 10. Point number one, devoted to quiet times. Acts 17, verse 10, we, we know this scripture. It's a very common scripture that we use in the Seeking God study. As soon as it was night, the, the brothers sent Paul and Silas away to Berea. On arriving there, they went to the Jewish synagogue. Now the Bereans were of more noble character than the Thessalonians, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. Many of the Jews believed, as did also a number of prominent Greek women and many Greek men. So here's a message, that, a, a passage that we teach in the Seeking God study, and we encourage people to eagerly examine the scriptures every day if they are truly devoted to seeking God with all their hearts. But we got to ask ourselves, how many of us actually do that ourselves? How many of us actually have quiet times without missing a day? You know, I led a seeking God study this week, and, and I call people to the same thing every time because I expect myself to do that. I call people to eagerly examine the scriptures every day. And then it really puts some pressure on myself because if I'm preaching this, if I'm teaching people this, if I'm calling others to do this, I got to do it myself or else I'm turning into my biggest fear, which is becoming a Pharisee, becoming a mm. hypocrite, having my worship in, to God be in vain. So I got to make sure that I have my quiet times every day. And I got to say, since the day that I've been baptized, December 7th, 2016, I have not missed a quiet time. Come on, Chris. Why? Come on. Because I love the word of God. I love it, guys. I'm obsessed with it. You know, I just finished this Bible right here. I have my, my other Bible. It's a, uh, this is a Schofield study Bible. I just finished it. I have my Zondervan reference Bible that I'm, I just opened up for the first time two days ago. And man, I just love it. I love the smell of it. I love the feel of it. I love the calf skin, the goat skin right there on my cheek. It, I'm just obsessed with it. I love it. I love it. I've been a disciple for four years, and I've read the Bible all the way through four times because I love the Word of God. I'm obsessed with it. But some of us have been disciples for years, and we're still not fully devoted to having quiet times. Come on, bro. Call it out. Some of us have been disciples for years, and we still haven't read through the whole Bible. You know, what does it look like to be fully devoted? Well, I want to give an illustration here. I, I'm married to the, in my opinion, the <laughs> most beautiful, the most humble, the, the most caring, the most serving woman in the world. That's and God right. has given me uh, this woman that is perfect for me. And I'm fully devoted to Mariah. And we're coming up on a year here, February 14th is going to be our one year anniversary. And I got to say, I, I'm just so excited every time I get to talk to my wife. We conversate every day. We talk every day. There's not a day that goes by that we don't talk. Why? Because I love talking to her. I love telling her about my spearfishing expeditions. I love telling her about the, the people that their hearts are being changed when we study the Bible with them. I love talking to her about all these different things in my life. And guess what? Brothers, here's a hint. I love listening to her. I love listening to what she has to say to me. Come on. Come on, teach us. I love being slow to speak and quick to listen. But guys, that's what a quiet time Come is. On, Chris. A quiet time is a conversation with God. When we pray, that's when we get to speak to our Father. We get to speak to God. We get to tell Him how great He is. We get to tell Him how grateful we are for Him. We get to tell Him, 
you know, lay, it's so awesome. We don't serve a tyrant. We get to lay our requests and petitions before him and watch him answer them. But how does God answer? He speaks back to us. See, God speaks back to us by us reading the scriptures. When we read the Bible, that's us listening to God. So when we're having a conversation with God, that means we're having a quiet time. But what would it look like if, imagine this, I walk into my house, right when I got done spear fishing, I come home and I start telling my wife, I said, man, I shot this huge fish. I dove all the way down to the bottom. I started telling her about my expedition. I looked into a rock and I shot this sheephead and my spear got stuck. But I'm holding my breath for like a minute and I'm wrestling this fish and I'm I'm taking it out, and then as soon as I finally get it out, I can barely breathe. I swim to the top, and then a seal comes up to me, and a seal's trying to wrestle this fish away from me and, and, and take it away. This is a true story, by the way, two weeks ago. And then she says, wow, that's so awesome. And as soon as she starts talking back to me, I go, shh, 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 I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear what you have to say. How long is that relationship going to last? Not long. But that's what happens when we're devoted to prayer, but we're not reading our Bible. We're not devoted to listening to God. All we want to do is talk, but we don't want to hear what he has to say back to us. And then it's the same, vice versa. If all we did was just read the Bible, but then when Mariah wants me to respond and let her know what I think about something, and I just stay silent, that's what happens if we're Focused on reading God's word, but we don't have a great prayer life. Come on, connect it. See, guys, we got to be devoted to quiet times. We got to be devoted to prayer and reading God's word. We need to be devoted to our time with God every morning. But can I be honest with you, family? Can I be honest right here? Be honest. Come Come on, bro. bro. Keep it real, bro. Come on, Chris. Preach. Come on, bro. Come on, tell me. I don't want to hurt you guys' feelings. If you guys tell me no, I'll, I'll, I won't say it. I don't want to hurt Say it, brother. Say it. 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 Come on, Chris. Chop it up, bro. Some of, us, some of us should be ashamed of ourselves of how little we know the Bible. Some of us should be ashamed. Do, do you know your first principles? Do you know the Bible, the word of God, the one thing that God has given us on this earth that is divinely inspired? Or do you know your Netflix better? Do you know Ooh. the Apple phone better? Ooh. See, I believe every disciple has to have the conviction that they have a goal of reading the whole Bible. Yeah. You know, the people that fall in love with God's word are the ones that stay faithful. The people that fall in love with the word of God are the ones that get fruitful. The people that fall in love with the word of God are the ones that grow, not just in the ministry, they grow in their life. Because they're getting all this wisdom and knowledge, not from other men, from God. Family, you want to have a great year spiritually? Devote your time in the morning to God. Before you get on Facebook, get your face in the book. Devote yourself to your prayers and talk about word in your life. Family, here's my challenge. Don't miss another quiet time this year. And my second challenge, read through the whole Bible this year. If you start right now and you read three chapters a day, you'll have finished the whole Bible by today of next year. If you read six chapters a day, you'll finish the whole Bible in six months. If you read 12 chapters a day, now that's pushing it a little bit. That's a, you know, I do find if you read through the Bible really quickly, you actually maintain a lot more than you think. But I wouldn't necessarily advise for that. But if you do read through the Bible, 12 chapters a day, you'll finish in three months. But be devoted to your quiet times. Be devoted to getting knowledge from the Holy Word of God. Let's go over to Nehemiah chapter 5. 
Come on, bro. Come on, Chris. Come on, Chris. Nehemiah chapter 5, starting in verse 14, it says, Moreover, from the 20th year in King Artaxerxes, when I was appointed to be their governor in the land of Judah, until his 32nd year, 12 years, neither I nor my brothers ate the food allotted to the governor. But the earlier governors, those preceding me, placed a heavy burden on the people and took 40 shekels of silver from them in addition to the food and wine. Their assistants also lorded it over the people. But out of reverence for God, I did not act like that. Instead, I devoted myself to the work on this wall. All my men were assembled there for the work, and we did not acquire any land. Point number two, devoted to hard work. You know, Nehemiah's goal was to rebuild the wall in Jerusalem. And Nehemiah was actually the governor of Judah. Or he was the governor in Judah, appointed by Artaxerxes. And when that, what naturally happens with, corrupt, with power is corruption. See, Nehemiah didn't get corrupted like the other governors before him. He devoted himself to, he devoted himself to building the wall of Jerusalem. He devoted himself to building God's kingdom. And he didn't just ask others to work hard. He devoted himself to it. You know, I believe that this year, so much is going to get thrown at us. But I want to challenge you, instead of getting discouraged, devote yourself to hard work. Instead of getting bitter, devote yourself to hard work. Instead of getting lazy and watching Netflix all day, or Amazon Prime all day, or Disney Plus all day, or Hulu all day, devote yourself to hard work. See, in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 4, it says, lazy hands make for poverty, but diligent hands bring wealth. He who gathers crops in the summer is a prudent son, but he who sleeps during harvest is a disgraceful son. Proverbs 12, 24 says, diligent hands will rule, but lazy hands ends in forced labor. Do you feel like someone's always trying to get you to do stuff? Get you to do this. Get you to do that. Get you to share your faith. Get you to be in a Bible study. Get you to the meetings of the body. Get you to give control. Get you to give a pledge for special missions. You feel like someone's always trying to get you to do stuff? There's a laziness that we need to repent from. If we feel that sharing our faith, giving contribution, going to meetings of the body is forced labor. Come on. Guys, we signed up to die on a cross. So we're not just calling you, we're, we're, we're not just calling you to come to these things. We're calling you to be a Christian. Don't think of this as forced labor. In reality, God is desperately trying to disciple your laziness out of you to get you to become a mighty disciple who's close to him. Come on. Come on, bro. This is what God wants. But are you working for the Lord? Are you working hard for the Lord? Jeremiah 48 verse 10 says, a curse on anyone who is lax in doing the Lord's work. A curse on anyone who keeps their sword from bloodshed. How does your sword look? In 2020, is there any blood on your sword? Or is your sword squeaky clean? You know, this is our sword right here. I got to tell you, there's blood on my sword. I set a goal for myself. Now, it was a faith goal, and I didn't achieve it. But I set a goal for myself to be personally fruitful 12 times yeah. in the year of 2020. Now, I didn't achieve that goal. But I was personally fruitful eight times in the year of 2020. And I wow. believe because I set a goal like Nehemiah here, and I prayed about this goal, that I was able, able to accomplish, not because I'm anything, but because... I was praying and reliant on God, and I just decided to devote myself to hard work. But how's your sword look? Is there any blood on your sword? Did you get in the waters of baptism with somebody? Were you personally fruitful? And here's the thing. Some of us work super hard, and if you weren't, amen. God is with you, and at the proper time, you will reap a harvest if you do not give up. Yeah. But I got to ask you, did you try? Did you go after it? 
because if people are always asking you to be in Bible studies, but you are perpetually busy, constantly putting work above the kingdom of God, no time to make disciples. If you say I'm too busy, that's the problem. You're just too busy. See, we need to clear out our life and be fully devoted to God to make disciples. And we could be fully devoted to God and have a full-time job. We could be fully devoted to God and fully devoted to our work. I'm not calling you to quit your job to make disciples. I'm just calling you to be fully devoted to being a disciple first. Come on, bro. And be an excellent employee second. And if you feel like you're down to the dumps, or you feel like you're being cut by this, this message right here, get in the Bible study. Get in the waters of baptism, and I promise you, all your problems will melt away. You get to see things clearly. What's really important in life, what it's all about. And what will really matter on the last day is did you give it your best? Did you give it your best? Because when we're in heaven, we're not going to be saying like, man, I wish I would have spent more money on, on myself and less money on special missions. Man, I wish I would have made my contra a little bit lower because that's just really sacrificial what I gave, man. I was too spiritual. No, we're going to say, I wish I would have shared with one more person. I wish I would have just denied myself and gotten in that one more Bible study because I could have been the person that changed that person's heart that backed out from baptism at the last minute. I wish I would have just met one more lost soul. See, you're either going to be fired up to build God's kingdom or by your inaction and your indifference, you're going to be tearing it down. All that will matter on the last day is did you give it your best? Did you gather or by your busyness, did you scatter? See, we need to call every disciple to be totally devoted to hard work in 2020. Let's go one chapter before. In Nehemiah chapter 4. Come on, Chris. You preach that young word, bro. Come on, bro. This is awesome. You guys want to hear the word of God? You want to hear the word of God? Come on, on, Chris. Chris. We 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 ready. Every single word. Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 10. It says, meanwhile, the people in Judah said, the strength of the laborers is giving out. And there's so much rubble that we cannot rebuild the wall. Also, our enemy said, before they know it or seize us, we will be right there among them and will kill them and put an end to the work. Then the Jews who live near came and told us 10 times over, wherever you turn, they will attack us. Therefore, I stationed some of the people behind the lowest points of the wall at the exposed places, posting them by families with their swords, spears, and bows. After I looked things over, I stood up and said to the nobles, the officials, and the rest of the people, don't be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome and fight for your brothers, your sons and your daughters, your wives and your homes. When our enemies heard that we were aware of their plot and that God had frustrated it, we all returned to the wall, each to his own work. Nehemiah was fully devoted to the work of the Lord. And Nehemiah had a goal. His goal was to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. He wouldn't take no for an answer. He stationed people by their families with swords in one hand and shovels in the other. And he said, fight for your brothers. Single, do we believe in the singles ministry that we can fight with the same heart that Nehemiah had? That we can fight for our families? That the singles ministry can fight for our brothers? That we can fight for our sisters? That we can fight for our families to become disciples? It's time to get our swords bloody and our hands wet. Because this is the year of mountain moving faith. Guys, I want to put this goal before us. Hashtag road to 400. Let's have a goal for the singles ministry that everybody can get behind, that we're all aware of. Not a secret goal that's hidden. Everybody knew that Nehemiah wanted to rebuild that wall. Let's get people knowing that we want to build up the wall in the singles ministry. Build up the wall to 400. Proverbs 29, 18 says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Do you believe that your ministry can be fruitful this month? Do you believe that your ministry can be fruitful every month? 
Do you believe that you can be fruitful every month? I want to challenge you to imitate Nehemiah as we close out. Set a faith goal for fruitfulness for yourself and for your Bible talk in 2021. My challenge is have a conviction that you're going to get your sword bloody. You're going to get in some Bible studies. You're going to cut some people up. You're going to unapologetically preach the word. And you're going to get your hands wet in the next 30 days. Come on, bro. Study the Bible with someone. Whether you personally meet them or not. Family, just get your hands wet. Whether you personally meet them or not, get in some Bible studies with people. Someone's on discipleship, let me hop in. Someone's in the kingdom study. Someone's doing the persecution study. I just want to hop in and contribute something and get my hands wet in the waters of baptism. I want to make a disciple. Get your hands wet. Get your sword bloody. And challenge number two, be devoted to devotionals. They're called devotionals. We devote ourselves to them. And as a singles ministry, what we're having every third Friday of the month, we're going to have a singles diva. You know, we tried to push it back to Saturdays, but we really singles work throughout the weekdays. And we take sisters out on dates on Saturdays. And we, we want to bring it back to every third Friday. Come on. Every third Friday of the month. So what does that mean? When's the next singles devotional? The congregational singles devotional. This upcoming Friday, the 15th. And I want to challenge you, be there. Make sure the person you disciple is there. Make sure the other 225 people that aren't able to be on this chat right now, make it to Friday, the 15th at 7.30. Family, let's be devoted. What's it going to take for this to happen? Every disciple devoted to their quiet times. Every disciple devoted to hard work. Every disciple devoted to prayer and ministry of the word. Let's do it, family. Let's go into 2021 ready to get our swords bloody and our hands wet. I believe in this group of disciples. I believe in the singles ministry. Let's close out with a sword for the Lord and a sword for the singles ministry. Thank you very much, man. Do it, bro. Come on. Yeah, man. Woo!